Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to build a slab rack. One of the first things you have to decide when you get a sawmill is what you're going to do with the waste wood or the slab wood or whatever term you want to use for it. And I've been looking at what a lot of other YouTube sawmill channels are doing, and a lot of them are actually just burning it because it can take more time and energy to process this into something usable than it's actually worth. My friend Paul Case actually runs his mill for a living and he's kind of made the decision that it's not worth it for him to process the slab wood. He bundles it up and sells it for like $10 a bundle just to get rid of it. Now I would like to use this and make something worthwhile out of it if it's effective. My first plan that I've already tried is to put a miter saw next to the sawmill. And then I put a firewood tote next to that. My plan was when the slab woods come off, you set them next to that saw. When you're done with the log, you slice all those slabs up on the miter saw. The problem with that is, even though I have kind of a high-end miter saw, it's really pushing its capability because a lot of these slabs are wide and thick and just frequently cutting those, I feel like it's gonna burn the saw up. It's kind of slow. And I just, I don't think I want to do it that way. If I was going to cut it with any kind of a chop saw, I'd get something more industrial than a, than a miter saw like that. But I think the best way to do it is with a slab rack and a chainsaw. So I've been watching all the slab rack videos I can find. And there's quite a few examples of people building them. And then you watch them actually use it. And they're a little bit problematic. Because everybody makes an X out of two by's and then drops the slabs in the middle and then makes the cuts down it. But when you make those cuts, all of this is kind of jumbled and loose in there. And then you got this end being supported, this end being supported, and then you make your cut next to that frame and those pieces are falling at you and binding on the saw and all kinds of things. I was looking at whether I could maybe make it a little bit better by having both ends of the piece be supported after the cut. And I think I can do that with a pretty simple modification, but we'll find out as we go. So the first thing I need to do is go around and gather up some suitable wood, probably dimensional lumber that I've cut that maybe wasn't perfect or wasn't very long. So I'll start going through the piles and see what we got. The first thing that was a tough decision for me is how tall should this rack be and how wide should it be? And I've been giving that a lot of thought for a couple days now and thinking, First, it needs to be wide at the base, you know, for stability, but I don't want it to be too wide at the top because I don't want to have to switch to a 36 inch bar every time I'm cutting slab and I want to be able to cut through it all at once. So I almost always have a 25 inch bar on my bigger saws. So I'm going to have the opening at the top of this be 25 inches. So if the rack's full, I can still cut through the whole pile at once. Now with those numbers, and then this number being both 25 inches, that will make this entire rack 47 inches tall, which is a pretty comfortable height. If you make it too tall, you're putting all that weight way up here. You really want to be cutting around waist height. So the top of that rack being 47 inches should be really good. And then, with the way this X is laid out, it's going to be 24 inches to the middle. So you're going to be able to do, make your cut without bending down a whole lot because you're, you can start with your bar level and kind of tilt it as you go down. And as I looked at the stock I had available and kind of another way I came up with this is these two pieces I cut to 53 inches because I've got a bunch of oddball widths and, and thicknesses over there that are 106 inches long. Okay, we've already got something that I didn't account for and another problem that I did account for and that is that we have to cut the bottoms of these flat which means when you make this cut you're actually going to be shortening it. The entire thing will set a little bit lower to the ground than I thought and it won't be quite as wide at the bottom So we'll be maintaining this 25 inches. So at the top, I'm putting the inside at 25 inches. 
At the bottom, the outside is at 25 inches. The other thing is, all of these need to be the same width. And these are seven inches. So I'm not gonna use these until I rip them down. This wood is so much harder than lumber from a lumber yard that it just isn't a great strategy to cut it on this portable table saw. It doesn't have the power. Each board will be a fight to get it through there. And I've got a bunch of them to do. I think I'm gonna have to do all my ripping with the bandsaw. Now that I've got these leg boards cut, I've kind of set up a form here that I'm gonna to use to build all my leg sets. So the way I did that was I laid them down in the measurements I talked about earlier, and then I screwed these wood blocks down on every side that basically blocks it from moving. And by not moving my mill head so that every leg piece will be the same thickness, if I lay each one into this little pattern, they should be identical, which will keep it from being wonky whenever I set it in place. And hopefully we'll get all those slabs setting evenly. So now, I'm gonna take this square, put it on here, and square this off. And that should give make the legs sit flat. If anybody's wondering how those high quality lights are doing, it's nighttime and I needed some safety glasses, so I just put my sunglasses on, and it is not too dark at night to wear sunglasses in this building. Basically, I've already framed up a template for this to be the answer, so hopefully it works. The height feels pretty good to run the saw down this. So I'm not going to have to bend down too low. I think a 25 inch bar is going to run right down like that. I watched a ton of other videos on people building similar types of slab racks and Seemed like people were showing every single one of these being built and it seems really boring to me. So I just skipped ahead and I built them all. Also, it seems like most people are using about four or five of these, but for my design, that wouldn't have worked. So I've got 10 of them. And you'll see in a minute why I thought I needed more than everyone else uses. So the next thing I need to do is grab a couple of boards that are at least 80 inches long. I'm gonna cut them to 80 inches because that will let me cut five 16 inch pieces plus one hanging off of each side, which is 96 and 112 inches. It's gonna cover most of what I do, but you can always cut them in half if I'm doing 16 foot or something like that. And 
it's a lot of resources to go into trying to build this slab rack 16 foot. The other thing is I can always just add to it. The way this design is, you just cut more legs and then you extend it out. So let's go ahead and get this put together and I'll show you what's unique about my design. Now before I put this stabilizer bar on this side, I want to take my measurement for where the cut should be. So we're going to say I'm going to make a cut with the chainsaw on the outside of this leg right here. So I want to measure from the outside of that leg and come in 16 inches, which is right here. So I want to make a cut right here. So we're going to look at 15 to 17 as a spot that has no legs. Okay, then we'll go 32, so from 31 to 33. So hopefully I've done a good enough job explaining what's different about this slab rack and why I think it's going to work better. So by having a brace on each side of where you want to put your cut, when I make this cut here, these pieces aren't going to fall. They're not going to bind. They're not going to hit the chain and get thrown. They should just sit still. And it seems like a small thing, but it's really a big deal. If you're putting a lot of use on this, I want to make it as easy as possible. Took a little bit of extra lumber at the beginning, but this is kind of not the best lumber I have. It's inconsistent thicknesses as I was figuring out the mill and different things like that. So I actually don't have all the screws in it yet because I ran out of screws and it's 1130 at night. So in the next couple days, you'll see me actually putting this to use. We'll cut up all these slabs out here, and then I'll tell you if I think it actually is worth the work that I put into it. So, unless you're watching this the day it came out, click on the video that I'm putting on the screen, and that will show you this thing in action. And if I have a long-term review a year from now or something, I'll put that up there too. So, anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.